Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome to episode 19 of this perfect ratio run. This run is going to be all about rockets and as you can see, rockets are awesome little flying things that you need to build the Dyson Spheres and this game is after all called the Dyson Sphere Program. But rockets need quite a lot of different materials and those materials need quite a lot of other materials. It's one of the most complicated builds so far but probably one of the most complicated builds that you will build before you really reach like the end game end game types of things like artificial stars and things like that um specifically we are only going to focus on building um one rocket every four seconds so the optimal speed of a mark three assembler that sounds like not a lot especially if you, if you know how many rockets you need to build a pr pretty decent dyson sphere but um as you will see we need a lot of room. This will be all the room we need. Compare that to the previous build we did for the orbital collectors. This is the entire room we need just to make one rocket every four seconds. So in case you were wondering, yes, that is why I also need a lot of space and why I keep it to only one per every four seconds in order to keep it somewhat manageable where you have, can place it down on your planet. Another thing that because of the huge size of this build um, that I will need to do is kind of choose a different format where I'm not going to be narrating every step along the way. I will talk you through every step along the way, but I will be doing the building off screen uh, a little part by a little part. And then after each part, I will show you what I did, explain the reasoning behind it um, and then build a little, little part again and then show you that because as I found out, if I have to kind of walk you through the entire building process and actually show it to you live on screen, this episode would be becoming way, way, way too long. It's actually the second time I'm recording this because the first time I noticed, even though I was done, it was way too long and I actually kept up the speed really well in that particular recording, but it was still way too long. So hence different format. I hope you like it. I know some of you really like watching me do the entire build, but once again, the size of the build where we have gotten to now is just too big to really make that manageable. It will be one hour plus videos, just me making one single build. So I hope you don't mind, um, but this keeps it a little bit more efficient for me as well. And I think a lot more entertaining for the majority of you. Let's jump right into that and let's place down the first few things that we need. Okay, so first things first, in order to build these rockets, we need three things. We need... The nano chips over here, just two assemblers. We need some Dyson Sphere components. So it's an extra, actual interesting building that we haven't built before. Well, it's not a building actually, it's a component. Um, in order to build that, we need a few things. Specifically, what we need are processors. We need solar sills, as well as some frames, some titanium alloy frames. Pretty late game materials in terms of the frames, pretty me early game materials in terms of the processors and kind of weird materials when it comes to the solar cells, which we haven't actually built at all yet in a build so far. Um, and why that is kind of a strange little thing uh, is because the solar cells need components that we haven't really made before at all. So that will be the next thing we focus on. Um, I actually forgot to place down the assemblers for the deuterium rods that I just realized. But of course, those are kind of straightforward. Um, and the nice thing is that they actually need the uh, alloy that I did place down here. Um, because the alloy also goes into the frame material. So this is kind of an opportunity to use two items in different parts of the build. So next step coming up. Give me a second to build it and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've expanded a little further and it's actually not that many buildings, but as you can see, this is where the builds really get complicated and why it takes so long if I have to manually walk you through it. Uh, actually building it live, it takes way too much time for this to stay entertaining. So we'll need to do it like this. Um, prepping a little bit for the further pieces of the build, we have some titanium smelters up here um, being supplied by this ILS. So, because of course this ILS won't be doing that much other than receiving the rockets. So we might as well use it for the titanium supply. I also know we are going to need a lot of hydrogen because of course we are making Casimir crystals because the plane filters need those. So, planning ahead, there's a belt of hydrogen over here. 
Um, now, of course, we have the plane filters. So there is a total of eight assemblers making plane filters. That's quite a lot, but we need a lot. Um, we need the titanium, crisp, uh, titanium glass, of course. We also need a few other things because that we haven't built before. Um, in order to make these components, we need solar cells. And in order to make solar cells, and I'll just show you quickly, we need um, the photon combiners, which are over here. And in order to make photon combiners, we need prisms and circuit boards. Now, these are not the most complicated things to build, but they're in a weird position in this particular build because, of course, um, these are relatively early game materials, glass and prisms and things like that, while everything else is pretty late game. So interesting little challenge over here there's actually quite a few different materials as well so you can see this this kind of belt foo over here where we're kind of trying to wrap everything around in such a way that we're supplying the um processors to different units as well as making sure everything all the in, in and outgoing products are over here as well we need graphene in order to make solar cells as well so that's an interesting challenge as well but on the other hand we need that graphene to make the nanotubes with which go into the frame materials as well so in that sense we actually have an opportunity there to kind of combine different work streams in this build so was quite a challenge to get it right but i think i did and of course remember that we also need that titanium alloy over here in order to make the fuel rods the titanium alloy is of course also a part of the build for um the nanotubes well not actually the alloy itself but the titanium that goes into it also goes into the nanotubes so there's another opportunity to combine that further on and last but not least forget don't forget that we also need those uh, super magnetic rings that go into this build over here that we haven't actually had the opportunity yet to place down so those go on a belt and you will see that a few times further in this particular build where basically we put a few items on hold on a belt um not literally on hold on a belt but uh, we we kind of have to structure out the build in such a way that we keep everything in a more or less square type of build so you can actually place it down easily so that's why this is actually uh, being postponed for some somewhere further along in the build anyway um in order to build all of this we will need to build a lot more things but first things first we have a pretty base material over here that's the deuterium that is made from hydrogen and is made by particle colliders which are awesome buildings so we have a nice little open space over here where we're going to place those down so be right back while i do that next step particle colliders and these things look really awesome don't they uh, one of my favorite buildings in the game I say that about a lot of buildings, but yeah, you can't have too many favorites, I think. Uh, ten of them, um, quite power hungry. So once again, this is a huge build and it will suck up a lot of power. Um, so build it somewhere you actually have that power if you want that your other builds to actually do something, including this one. Um, quite straightforward, we have an outgoing belt of deuterium in the middle over here and wrapping around going into the deuterium. Uh, fuel rods over there we also need a lot of hydrogen in order to supply these buildings and we have that ILS up there so we might as well just kind of put it out and because there was already hydrogen on this build remember uh, there's already hydrogen in this ILS so let's use it on two belts at the same time and be a bit efficient about that nothing too complicated but of course um, yeah we need to work on that now speaking of working on a few things um, that fixes the deuterium fuel rod main production so let's focus again a little bit on top here. We need, in order to make these um, planar fil uh, plane filters, we need titanium glass, we need some casimir crystals. And of course, in order to make those materials, we'll need a few other things like titanium crystals, etc. So yeah, let's um, build that quickly and then walk you through that. You like puzzles? I have a puzzle for you because we have the casimir crystals over here that need kind of annoying materials because specifically they need the graphene that is going to be coming in with a little cheat from this belt over here because we also need the graphene for the solar cells over here and we're going to need a lot of graphene for the carbon nanotubes that we'll have on this belt so in order to prepare for that uh, i made sure i put a splitter here and it needs a little bit of room hence this little corner over here and i did need to bring it in all the way around there will be a few bridges in this build specifically as you can see we also have one on the right over here 
because we need that titanium that we built before we kind of need to wrap that around because we need the titanium for the titanium crystals as well as the titanium glass on this bottom row so it needs to be on this middle belt over here and in order to get it there we kind of need to cheat and make this little corner now i did actually kind of cheat while building this so just to show you how that works if you build a belt like this and you make a you actually need to start out one and further apparently my inventory is full apologies about that uh, and we do it kind of like this now this won't actually be able to connect to this that gives an error you delete this uh, like so what you can do is then bring it down like that and I actually did it wrong because I needed to delete one more part now there's a little little hop over here as you can see it is actually going down to the belt now if you do it like that you get the corner and you get a minimal hop across and yeah it's nice and clean and you don't need any further spacing than that so this is how you make little hops like that nice little trick it's very useful if you want to make compact builds and not those huge bridges but we did need a bridge in this particular build other because otherwise again we would need to um Make, make things a lot more complicated than this in terms of how we actually space it out. And this this keeps it nice and compact by making that little bridge or two. Um, what else to say about this particular part of the build? Remember, of course, that we still need that processor and circuit board. So they're going through here as well as the glass. Um, so we're not actually building that over here. What we are building is because we, are, we need the titanium crystals and we don't use rare materials we uh, need to make that organic crystals and as you might remember from my yellow science build there's an exactly one to one ratio between organic crystals and plastic so hence six of each and that makes all the production we need and again we have a few belts going through here and other than that i don't think this is uh, too complicated quite straightforward but it is kind of nicely spaced out like this it's a nice little compact build for these relatively late game materials now that also means that we can go on to the next which is the carbon nanotubes that i just mentioned we will need to set up some production for that and remember we also need the alloy so let's see how we can handle that in a compact way okay so nanotubes we need 12 nanotubes for smelting facilities so that they are these are in the middle over here in this entire row all the way to the back over there um in order to make that of course we need several materials we'll need some uh, alloy we'll, well actually not alloy we need some titanium which we actually haven't produced yet so there's a titanium belt in here without actually any titanium yet let's not forget about that we also need graphene so there's a huge line of graphene which will be one of the next things we'll need to build but before we do that, let's not forget about our frames over here. The frames over here need alloy. And of course, we need that alloy for several reasons as well in the uh, component build as well. So in order to do that, uh, sorry, not component build. I mean, of course, the um, deuterium fuel rods. In order to build that, we actually have a very nice layout over here. We need exactly six of that. Uh, in order to make that titanium alloy, we'll need acid and we need steel. So the steel to alloy ratio is exactly one to one and as you remember the ratio of steel to iron is also one to one so this is an exact nice nicely perfect ratioed type of build for alloy other than of course the um acid that we need but we actually also need exactly six chemical facilities producing acid they don't really fit in between here so i put them here on separate belts remember of course they need three inputs so we'll need to put in an ils maybe somewhere over here and um, as you can see we have an outgoing belt for acid over here don't forget about the iron ore because of course even though these are directly connected we actually do need to fit them in with the base materials so some iron over there we brought around the um, silicon belt all the way over here we still have to build that part and we also still have to build the magnetic rings we haven't really gotten the chance for that yet so we have some room left uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's make sure we focus a little bit on our um, production in the top over there. Because we need specifically 
this kind of pain issue is the uh, graphene. Now, remember, I am not using rare materials in this uh, run so far because we're going for the achievements first. And this run is achievement proof. We're not using rare materials, at least not until we lock, unlock the actual achievement. So we need to do it the hard way. And let's do that. Okay, so we need graphene and we need a lot of graphene. So this is actually nine times two. So 18 graphene chemical producing facilities over here. Um, that means that of course we do need quite a few items for that. So we need the graphite as we need the acid. Graphite will be in the middle belt over here. And this is the same belt that is also supplying the graphite over here. That goes into, uh, oh, actually flew past that. Uh, that goes into the plastic so it's on the same belt quite nice and neat now we also need a little bit of graphite for the super magnetic ring so i've split those off you will see that in a moment um but other than that 99 percent of this graphite is going on to the belt in the rest of the build the asset needs to come from above so i put in exactly nine asset facilities over here as well that's so that should be able to keep up exactly with these um graphene production facilities and of course we needed to bring the uh, processors the circuit boards and the glass production from somewhere else um, because we didn't have room for that to build it over here so i had to cheat a little bit there's a few bridges in this particular build and just because i do want to keep the layout kind of nice and clean and well in order to do that uh, nice and clean and by, by that actually i mean kind of square because of course you could kind of have a bulge sticking out here kind of and then build that particular part of the build over there but I like to keep it from east to west as much as possible west to east whatever you prefer in order to make sure you can actually place it down easily which is already a challenge considering how large this build is but it should work out just fine as long as you build it somewhere around the equator so bridges for that reason um, there is a lot of base materials in here that we need to supply from an ILS that will we will be putting that in a second and remember there's one nice thing we have stone over here and we have glass over here so remember that is also uh, something that you can look forward to because that of course means that we can kind of uh, use that stone production or st uh, stone supply I should say for the glass production as well as the acid production now um, we have a lot of empty space over here. What are we going to do there? Well, we need that uh, super magnetic ring production that we have on this belt over here. So that's the next thing we'll focus on. Okay, so I will admit this part, it was a little bit of a puzzle while I was making this. Um, so first of all, we need, of course, the titanium for the build. So we can actually make those nanotubes and we can make the alloy production that we just put down pretty straightforward and we can use this ILS over here to supply that however we also need all that other stuff well specifically we needed these super magnetic rings and they need turbines and that needs engines and that needs coils and that needs cogs which are actually not used anywhere else in this entire build so we don't need that many of it but we do need all of it so in order to supply that with all the base materials we're kind of plugging in um, some copper which is mainly used for the uh, coils over here we also need some iron for the cogs as well as the engines uh, to make sure those are working uh, as you can see they go down here this is the iron belt and then there's a simple cog belt on the outside over here so this is not the typical square uh, turbines engines uh, coils cogs built that you've seen in some of the previous episodes simply because we don't need that many of them so it doesn't really make sense to kind of go for the square build um well you could actually but it kind of works out better this way because of how the base materials are coming in we uh, remember we still have that belt with silicon on the outside going on over here but we also need quite a few magnets so i have nine magnet smelters over here three of them are being supplied to the uh to the rings and then the other six are because of the distance here and because of how the belts work we are collecting them, flipping them around, and making sure that all six of them are feeding into the um, magnetic coils over here. You could do this differently. You could probably move everything up one line and then have two belts in different directions going in like that. That works. I just don't like how it looks. And I ha we had the room over here, so we might as well just flip that around and do it like that. But if you feel like moving everything, of course, by one line, it's perfectly reasonable to do so. 
Um, remember, we are aiming at one production of um, magnetic rings. We actually don't need the full production of this facility. Hence, you might notice that these ratios are slightly off. That's because we're not trying to match these up perfectly in the intermediate projects, but we are only looking at the output. So all these inputs are based on getting the exact number of super magnetic rings that we need for the output in this particular build. Now, of course, that does mean that we need quite a few base materials. So we have four belts here that are now actually kind of demanding inputs, uh, basically all the base materials that we need to smelt. And apparently my research speed is too low, probably a power issue somewhere. Anyway, uh, and we have these. So that will be the few things that we should be working on as well. I did bring them up here and uh, kind of make them neat and combine them because that allows us to use the remaining space of this build for that specific smelting part. So let's get to that. And here we go. So we have this little row of glass smelting facilities over here. So that helps us get the glass in place finally for the... Uh, Titanium glass, of course, as well as the prisms that we have on the other half of our build right around the start. Uh, we also want, of course, the processor. So we have five assemblers here making those processors, which in turn need these seven component facilities, as well as hidden kind of behind this ILS over here, the two um, circuit boards. Now, as you can see, the circuit boards kind of wrap in between here and then go around the corner because they need to be on the inner belt in order not to get into issues all the way on the far right compared to where we are now of the build. We also have the processors. They need to be on the outer belt. Hence, this is why they are positioned like that and wrapping kind of like around there. Now, of course, this ILS is able to supply this with all the stone that we need. And we also need stone to go in the other direction. So... This makes sure that the stone is being used from the same ILS in two different places. I really like it when it works like that. We also have this ILS supplying the water as well as the um, oil. And I remember this water goes all the way through. So it's being used in the chemical facility over here. It is being used in the build over here. And it is being used in the belt build over here for the glass, uh, titanium glass production. So. A lot of water going through. Uh, it's, there should be more than enough water on that belt in order to sustain all of that. But of course, it's really nice to kind of have that all the way going through, through the entire build and have that in place. Now, this kind of wraps up this part of the build because we have all the materials that we needed for these belts. We have all the chemical facilities working now, or at least almost working, because we are lacking a few things. We need graphite, but most importantly, we need the bottom half of our build working as well and in order to do that we need that copper iron and uh, sorry um silicon that's what's the word i was looking for in order to make that work we have a nice little open space over here so let's put in some smelters all right and here we go we have an ils over here that is supplying all the necessary ground resources for all these smelters over here so as you can see we have a total of 12 iron smelters we have a total of 23 silicon smelters so these are two rows with one outgoing belt in the middle and we have a total of 10 copper smelters now of course these are not exactly symmetrical in that regard but this is perfect the ratio so we don't want to overproduce just to make it look pretty um, but all in all this it is looking very organized so I kind of like it and remember that we need to supply all these um, component producing facilities over here with the silicon as well as the copper so that's why you see this kind of sticking out and then taking a wide turn in order to reach these outer facilities over here now pretty straightforward but it's a nice little corner that we have over here we have some area left and of course we also have one item left at the moment which is the large amount of graphite that we need in order to supply all the chemical facilities in the middle of our build. So let's see how we can do that because we actually have a very nice solution to make use of this open space over here. And here we go. The last part isn't this pretty. We have 40 smelters producing graphite which are all hooked up by means of this ILS all in the way in the back belt going around here with all the coal and then splitting off in two different belts um, well 
it's two belts coming in from different directions i should say uh, because we have more coal on these belts than we can fit on one belt in order to supply all, all of these smelters so that's why we need the extra and as you can see we are alternating between inputs and output so we have an outgoing belt an incoming belt an outgoing belt an incoming belt and so on across the entire row so this is 10 rows of 40 and 10 rows at least like this and yeah i just really like this build um i'll let this little last part of the build 40 smelters is a lot so this is a nice way to kind of fit them in and yeah i just like the looks of it so now all we need to do is hook everything up and see if it actually works all according to plan Okay, so let's power everything up and see if it works. Oh, wrong button. There we go. We have a lot of lights. And of course, it will take a little time to uh, start up this facility. So no big problem there because, of course, we're not in any rush to do so. Because the whole thing is supposed to kind of make all the base materials and produce the secondary materials. So it will take a while for it to get all the way to the final product. But as you can see, for example, these uh, processor facilities are now starting up. I really like how this all looks when it's fully functioning so i can look at this all day but let's not do that um we have the graphene production starting up as well look at these highways it doesn't just this just look awesome i think it does anyway um we have the super magnetic rings over here so you will see these assemblers as i mentioned before maybe not always working at full speed that has everything to do with the fact that we're kind of over producing at some point maybe uh compared to what you need for the magnetic rings the magnetic rings will be working at almost full speed it's not a problem if these are not working at full speed because we actually fine-tune those ratios in order to match up to the one super magnetic ring that we have over here we are also already producing uh, a lot of other things like um the why is this not working oh i think that has everything to do with the fact that the plastic wasn't working yet so like i said uh, it is uh it needs some time to it for it to start up so you can see now for example the first organic crystals are being produced the second is now charging up and it has everything to do with the fact that plastic also needs graphite and the graphite was initially being completely hogged by these graphene production facilities but there is an overflow by design um, so that overflow goes straight into the plastic facilities over there it just takes a little while for it to get saturated now we also have the uh, titanium alloy production over here which should be working and feeding into the frame production over here so as you can see this is almost already fully up to speed now what is not working yet is the um, solar cells but as you can see we are slowly guard starting to fire this up and again that has everything to do with the fact that all the glass is currently being sucked up by the titanium glass production and the prisms are all the way in the end so as you can see it is getting through and the belt is actually completely empty so everything is being used and that is by design perfect ratios hooray it's working um we have the um fuel rods over here now these fuel rods are actually very useful for your own fuel as well compared to the hydrogen fuel rods that i'm still using that is just lazy me being lazy um so if you want you can also just kind of put an ILS over here and kind of desync that but of course that will uh, have an impact negative impact on your rocket production so i don't recommend doing that but if you get desperate you can just steal a few of those rods they last a very long time so it's something you could consider but we are already producing rockets so that is a very good thing as you can see this is working so we are now producing one rocket every four seconds at least we will as soon as the power is back up to speed because i think we are probably currently a little bit underpowered because we are charging up one, two, three, four ILSs at the same time. So of course that will drain power initially a little bit. So that's also a reason why your build might start out a little bit slow. But as soon as the ILS is completely charged up, that should fix itself. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this build. I also hope you enjoyed this new format to keep it somewhat shorter and sweeter. It's still, of course, quite a detailed build and a lot of explanations and I, I know you guys like that so i'll keep that in for sure but this is the difference between having a one hour plus episode and a sub one hour episode even though it's still long enough i hope you enjoyed it um if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe comment le let me know what you think and i will see you in the next patch i think where we'll be building exciting new buildings so i will be taking a detour i think 
from the initial planned out schedule because of the patch because everyone wants advanced miners at least i do and we are also might be uh, taking a little detour around the proliferators which we now know are exactly the item that we have already in the game which are the accelerators and the spray paint uh, coaters um, that were already in the uh, memos in the files but uh, apparently they renamed it to proliferators if you checked out my community post there is also a tease from the developers about what i think to be geothermal energy I'm not entirely sure they didn't actually mention anything other than putting a screenshot there so if you haven't seen that go to my community tab feed and, and take a look at it or check for example reddit where there's a, a sticky post with that information that the developers put up there um and last but not least we'll get to redesign our icarus and to be honest i think i already look pretty good with my nice white and orange outfit white and gold maybe even um, but we'll get a lot of customization options in that regard as well so that will be fun to play around with so see you on thursday